And I believe we have Stuart back, do we not? Okay, ladies and gentlemen, here is Stuart this morning. Uh, he's going to recap what he did. Stuart, just tell us exactly uh, what, what your story is. Um, what I've got here, Dan, is um, the Arsenal v Tottenham match from last week. Yes. What I did was took the players' numbers off the backs of their shirt. Very good. And then corresponded it alongside the Chinese restaurant and the Indian restaurant. So mm -hmm. Arsenal basically was the Chinese. Which is? Uh, the new dynasty in Worthing. The new dynasty restaurant in Worthing. We now hear Tottenham's numbers represented by... Uh, uh, yeah. This is Arsenal, Dan. Yeah, but yes. uh, Arsenal, Arsenal were the new dynasty Chinese restaurant yep. Worthing, yeah. And Tottenham were the um, Panshi Indian restaurant in Malvern Road, Kilburn, London. Okay. Sounds very so, now, good. Uh, I'm going to ask you to do what uh, we did this morning. I'll ask to recap for our newer listeners. Uh, tell us how Arsenal will shape up when they are represented by the Worthing Chinese restaurant. What do we get? Okay, right. In goal, we had new dynasty hot hors d'oeuvres, mm -hmm. large. Mm-hmm. The defence were honey barbecue spare ribs, yes. baked spicy ribs, Very good. crispy vegetable spring rolls, mm -hmm. and deep fried squid. Fantastic. We had a midfield uh -huh. lining up a satellite chicken on a skewer. Oh, very good. <laughs> yeah. One ton meatball soup. Uh -huh. Fresh whole crab. Fre now, a fresh whole crab was who? Patrick Vieira. Patrick Vieira. And of course, he right. pulled a hamstring on one of his eight, six legs six today. Legs, eight legs, legs, is it? How many legs? It's the only one the few we're going to identify. Patrick Vieira was a fresh whole crab. Okay, yeah. And on the right wing, we had steamed large king prawns in garlic. Yeah. <laughs> who was that? Just, just. Overmars. That's Overmars. Of course, it's <laughs> Overmars. Yeah, yeah. Um, up front, we had large butterfly king prawn. Yeah. And sesame prawns. Sesame. Now, I like the sesame oh, prawns. Oh, yeah, no. I never eat them all because they get a little saturated by the time of the end of the meal, but I do like them with the seaweed and one or two other starters. So, uh, and then that was the full Arsenal side? Yeah, and the substitutes were prawn crackers and fresh lobster. Yeah, and fresh lobster was? Um, Christopher Ray. Christopher Ray was a fresh lobster. Now, because Louis Bowie Morte, we do discovered, was the prawn crackers. Cracker. That's right. Now, we're not going to reveal everyone, only when uh, yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm, 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 I'm too curious to resist. Oh, and now, yeah. here we go. This is Tottenham, and they are uh, represented by which restaurant? The Panchi Indian restaurant in Malvern Road, Kilburn. Very good. Okay, and a fine establishment, I'm sure. And here we go. This is Tottenham Hotspur as of their menu. Line up in goal. We had a selection of mixed starters. Mm -hmm. The defence was onion bhaji. Yes. Prawn cocktail. Yes. Tandoori chicken and vegetable tarli. Prawn cocktail? Now, normally, I know at the end they always have chicken and chips for the faint of heart, but I didn't know prawn cocktail would make it as far down as, as, as your balty. Well, Danny, I you know. Raymond Vega, Dan. Y yeah, Raymond Vega would have been there. Fine, didn't it, eh? Yeah, so, so what is... What is um, oh, so, Raymond Vega... So, so Sol Campbell's 23. What's 23 again? Veg vegetarian tarly. Of course, further down the menu, of course. Okay, yeah, so yeah. is vegetarian okay, so tarly. Uh, yeah. Carry on with the side, yeah. Right, we've got, uh, then we've got boro chingri marley. Oh, mm -hmm. quite unusual, yeah. Right, aloo puree, mm -hmm. chicken chat and tandoori trout. Uh, oh, a tandoori <laughs> trout? No, I, I want to know what aloo puree is, because that sounds to me a very That's just Edinburgh. Is it? <laughs> is it aloo puree? <laughs> okay, yes, very good. Up front, you had tandoori wing and prawn puree. Prawn puree? Yeah. Uh, did you go as far as the substitutes here? Yeah, we got uh, moogly lamb pasanda yeah. and chicken or lamb shashlik. Oh, oh shashlik. No, no, I love the pasanda. I've got to say, I know I'm, oh, you like it hot there. Yes, I, I do. I well, do. I like the pasanda. Who's that? That was Andy Sinton. I like the, I like Andy Sinton now. Now, this is this is super Now, now Indian restaurants up and down the country, you've got to put this into reverse. And people today should be allowed to come in and order footballers yeah. off your menu. Yeah, you should be able to say, I love the Andy Sinton. Uh, yeah, I love Rule, uh, Rule Fox. Um, Andy Sinton. Side it. order of that. Did Alexanderson score twice there? I'll have some side order of uh, like, Friday Alexanderson. We're, we're here, by the way, till 7.30 tonight. If anyone wants to send us any Indian food up here to Talk Radio, we're number 57, are we? We're number... 76 Oxford Street. 76 Oxford Street. We're up on the third floor, although I, I think the bloke on reception will probably dig his thumb into it if we're lucky. <laughs> My friend, this is one of the great ideas we've ever had on the show, one of the great pieces of invention. Uh, anything else well, you want to tell us? We've got other restaurants now, don't we? Other squads. That's great. Anything else you want to tell us? No, I did see something in World Football Magazine this week about there's a North Korean player called something Bum Chum. Oh, no, Bum Chum. No, we've done say that, 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 I, I, without being rooted, you're denigrating your own craft now because yeah. what you've done is, is perfect. It's beautiful. Yeah. Yes, of course, players are called Bum Chum. And Bum Lick and all that. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Well, yeah. I, I, as, as one of our, as one of our uh, correspondents did tell us, um, there is a player playing, I believe, in the Malay League, and his name is Mok Sucker. <laughs> Yes, it is. It's mock sucker. Uh, that's what I was told this week. Now, you know, uh, uh, you make your own whatever you like out of that. But, so we don't need any more of those. But uh, anyone who can be as inventive as that is to bring us the fact that Andy Simpson is, of course, a lamb passander. Yum, yum, and indeed again, yum.
But anyway, 0500 1053 89, give us something over there, Dan. What have yes, you got? Yes, indeed. I've been threatening this since this morning. Um, Glenn, Glenn from uh, somewhere in Scotland, um, has sent us his top five footballing epitaphs. These are his ideas of what famous football Now, you said this was low grade, grade entertainment. entertainment. What they should have, then I changed my mind when I read the first one, mm -hmm. what they should have on their, on their gravestones. Okay. <laughs> Barry Davis. <laughs> This was he. <laughs> now, remind me again, why is that so... Because Barry Davis is forever saying, and David Batty's having a storming game. The ball goes to, this is he. <laughs> <laughs> Always. Yeah. Rude Hullet. <laughs> Sexy maggots also. <laughs> Right. That's not low grade at all. <laughs> I've changed my mind, you're actually right. <laughs> Kenny Dalgleish. Dead, if you say so. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good. Ron Atkinson, mm. non-existing for fun. <laughs> that is Ben David Letterman, isn't it? Yeah. He's very good. And perhaps the favourite. I won't do. I won't do the accent. Rajiv is gone, so I'll let, I'll let it go. Trevor Brookin. Perhaps here lies the body of Trevor Brookin. Probably he'll be a little bit disappointed that he's dead. <laughs> oh, that is great. Who said that? That was um, Glenn from Scotland. Glenn, very that good. is great. <laughs> That is good. If, ever, if you want to fax us any more epitaphs for players, what they'll have on their gravestone. That Please, oh, please. Dead, if you say so. Trevor Brooklyn, perhaps he lies body. Trevor Brooklyn would probably be a little bit disappointed that he's dead. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I've all gone dizzy laughing at that. That was superb. Let's bring it back to talking about football. Here's Joanne. Hello, Joe. Hello, lovely Danny. Oh, Hello, lovely Joe. Joanne. We want to say thank you ever yes, so much for the stuff. Yes, we're removed and grateful and really quite peeved with the rest of the listenership. <laughs> they haven't sent, we haven't sent, they've received a single present or card off any of the other listeners. Anyway, but nevertheless... When, we were, right, when we were over at the BBC, we used to, we used to have to rely on stealing oh. Terry Wogan's cards <laughs> to make fill the studio. So, Joe, what can you tell us this week, my uh, Christmas sweet pea? <laughs> well, um, I travelled somewhere last night with both three mm. to their match today. Yeah. Uh -huh. So I'm in that place now. Are you really? Yeah. Another place. Where would that be? <laughs> Where's the paper? Where's the paper? Where's the paper? Okay. And uh, what kind of a... Uh, what are you going to do at Christmas? Are you, I bet you're going to... Uh, this, 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 here we get to the... This is the heart of the story. I bet you're going to be alone at Christmas. No, I'm going to Barcelona for Christmas. Are you? Yeah. Is, is there a football connection? No, I'm just going with the girls to Barcelona. Oh, yeah. Oh, you're having, having an Alex Ferguson-style mid-season break, are you? Wow. Yeah, right. now, d d uh, uh, any particular players in Barcelona? You, have you actually looked up any of their players? Valdo. Um... Yeah, yeah there are a few. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. I don't know. We've we've said a football free Christmas. So. Have you, have, oh, all right. But have you ever <laughs> have you ever slept with a continental player? I want to know if they've got a better technique. Not slept with one. No. Have you, have you been out with one? Um. Are we yeah. years be years behind the continentals of this? Are we? <laughs> well, no, apparently not. Oh, I don't think so. So, uh, who's the best lover out of all the bows? The best. Yeah. Mm, both three. Is he? Oh, yeah, well, yeah. Yeah, we got to say that, I suppose. I suppose so. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but that, that was a very impertinent question. I don't know why. I don't, it was. Don't there was no impertinence at all. No, no. Well, she she sent no, no. this new calendar, which is the, the good thing. Uh, the, the both three thing is, is uh, shaping up to be pretty firm, all puns intended. Uh, 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 not really. No. It's just the sex thing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. See, I think we're a bit old. At Dan, we're a bit old-fashioned. Yeah, 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 I know. You know. She gets, she's been out a few times. We think, oh, there's wedding bells going on there. <laughs> no. I know. We're trying to husband the girl now. What yeah. are you young folks going to yeah. bed today? <laughs> and we, we, we like sitting back. We, it's the first ever wedding from the Major and Kelly show. <laughs> Joe, when are you back again? Um, when from Christmas? Yeah. Or, um, yeah. I'm coming back on the thirtieth. Uh -huh. And what's yeah. the plans for today, Joe? Well, well, there's a player around today who's like second on my all-time list after Kevin oh, really? Ragi. Oh, really? So I'm going to meet him today, hopefully. Really? Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, have you told anyone off the air? Yes, yes. yes. You want to see the name? Yes, can yeah, I see the name? Uh, uh, go, oh, here no, we go. Go. Unfold the envelope. No, right, here we go. This is who Joe has got her thought. Any particular pride you got? No. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I know. Talk about giving back the no. elephant man, right? Really? Well, well, I just, I just how, Joe, just, just, uh, why him? Why him? Yeah. My God, he's sexy and dangerous and gorgeous. Where do I stop? Dangerous, I'll give yeah. you that. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, I mean, uh, uh, what, in a, a buffalo a, style, a yeah. isn't he? Isn't he a bit of a brute? Yeah. Um, I don't think so. Well, I won't know until I meet him. So. Oh, although I said, of course, that's assuming, of you know, that that might be okay. Yeah. A little yeah. bit of roughage. <laughs> or <laughs> that's he might be protesting too much. Yes, there is that. <laughs> well, Joe, uh, uh, that, that that's that's on your uh, on your sites for today. Can yeah. you call us back as usual this evening and let us know if there was any progress in that um in that in that in that way? I've done it. I'm no good anymore talking to Joe. Sorry, go on, what? Um, um, I got back with Bo too this week. What do you mean you got back with him? 
Um, oh, well, he got a hump, didn't he, because of both yeah. rays? Yeah, but um, when you say you got back with him... Uh, um, we slept together. Did you? Yeah. When was that? Um, <laughs> Wednesday afternoon. It was busy as a bee, aren't you, this girl? <laughs> Wednesday, Wednesday afternoon, uh, okay, no, that'd have been all. Yeah, I can see that, yeah. And yeah. Has he, have you forgiven him, or has he forgiven you? What's the story? Um, well, he bought me a Christmas present. It was the tackiest present I've ever had. Well, but... I'll be the judge of that. Go on, what is um, it? Well, it was underwear, but it was Rotten. really horrible underwear. Oh, the kind of, it was the kind of stuff that, um, you know, men think... That yeah, you know, it yeah. was. And, and was the size right, Joe? No, it wasn't. No, of course not. But, Joe, did you wear it anyway? I didn't wear it, but I slept with him anyway. Yeah. <laughs> you are, you've got to stick the gear on. You've got to stick the gear on. I mean, was it conventional gear or was it, it was a bit odd? It was a bit odd. Was it? I'll yeah. tell Jamie, will you? And he'll tell me during this. Uh, oh, go on then. What was it, Joe? Go on, tell us. What was it? It's a Premier League player's gift. Uh, what yeah. was it? Well, it was leather. Yeah. And it had all bits cut out. Yeah, I can. Uh, yeah. And was it some kind? Of, was it? Well, otherwise, you can't get your legs through it, can you? Was it? Was it the? Uh, was it the kind of the, one of those sort of things? I don't know. That it looks like it should be over a dray horse's head. It, it yeah, it was an all-in-one. Yeah. And it, yeah. Was there any brass work? <laughs> <laughs> and was it real leather? Um, yeah, it was. Yeah, no, it was horrible. He's bought out a chandlery, hasn't Yeah, he? the potential to be baggy is going to be always murderous. <laughs> you think it'll be baggage, yeah? Yeah, uh, it would be. So, but anyway, it's, it's, it's not a... Oh, Carolyn here wants it. OK, so you're listening to Britain's <laughs> premier football phone-in. Uh, <laughs> uh, bung someone through there. Uh, uh, <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm... <laughs> What? What are you saying? I've got to read. Let me do it. We'll do the call. Wait, Colin, come and see you, no, Colin. We, you know we used to do I Had Dream About Football. We must return to I Had Dream About Football. All our categories are still open. Yeah, people dream. need prompting. That's Dear all. Danny and Danny, please read my uh, my whole letter because it's absolutely true. This is from James in West Sussex. Yeah. Um, uh, Earlier this month, I had a dream in which you both appeared. Oh, God. Okay. Yeah. Now, this, the, the, the details of the dream are so flimsy that it has to be true, okay? I'll just read it verbatim. The first scene I envisaged was Mr. Baker sprawled on the sofa, unshaven. Probably a not uncommon sight. Uh -huh. In the second scene, I saw you both taking part in a money-making venture. You were giving guided tours of a town centre by horse and cart in the run-up to Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> Any town specified? Just <laughs> giving guided tours of a town centre in a horse and cart in the run-up to Christmas. <laughs> the final part of the dream saw Mr. Kenny's bank manager running after him. <laughs> <laughs> what? Who's that from? James in West Sussex. James, superb. Uh, I know it's self-regarding nonsense. It is, of course, self-regarding nonsense. Well, first water, but... James Molnar. But thank you very much indeed. Yeah, guided into a town set by horse. See, there's me. In the run-up to Christmas. Uh, do you know who Maxime are? They, they're the uh, one of oh, you on the internet. Uh, this person has Maxime have a uh, list of uh, tapes you would not be able to import into this country, no matter how much. And somebody you has put their names against squad players. Yes. Of which team? The Maxime catalogue uh, is against the Arsenal side here. Uh, M A X I M. If anyone who knows. sent this? Uh, oh, of course. And I can't. Oh yes, Andy Jacobs yeah. in Crewcom. Uh, so uh, uh, the Maxime catalogue, and he's, he's talking the catalogue numbers of these videos, which you would not be able to bring into the country, no matter how much money you. Pay because uh, they're not sold in this is, country. Is he also from Amsterdam, isn't it? No, no, it isn't there. We remember that very, very well. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, so uh, uh, this is David Seaman, uh, translates to old and young do it grandpa. <laughs> Lee Dixon, old and young series grandma's day out. Uh, Nigel Winterburn, Chessie Moore's big melon pleasure. <laughs> Patrick Vieira's Lesbo Sado Games. It sounds too good to be true, but I'm sure it's real. Uh, Steve Bold is Treatment de Choc. <laughs> and anyone who's familiar with the de Choc series knows that's, that's an awful... Tony Adams, Freaky Scene. Uh, Nelson Vivas, Homemade Belgian Master. <laughs> Once a master, oh, always, always a master. master. Frederick Lundberg, Homemade Pain, Humiliation and Worse. <laughs> and Worse? <laughs> Nicholas and Elka, homemade, painful afternoon. <laughs> Dennis Birdcamp, homemade, fat slave. <laughs> I, re I regret that making that now. You know, that's not Mark Overmars, uh, play girls. Christopher Ray, try again. <laughs> and these last two are just too much. You must check the website, I think, to see if these are real. Martin Keown, don't hit my feet. <laughs> And Ray Parler, Doctor, my ass hurts. <laughs>
<laughs> that is the Maxime porno You're catalog. You're going to have I think so, yeah. Thank you. That's a terrible thing. Do, do a link to that one, Alex. Five past seven. Uh, there it is. So that's, that's the kind of inventiveness we're looking for. 0500 1053 uh, 89. Let me, let me do this cartoon. Apologies if you're trying to get to on the phones. We are going through them as quick as possible now. Anyone who listened this morning will have heard Angus Wittgenstein's first effort in which he, uh, he, he compared Manchester United's tactical strategy for last season to the Von Schlieffen plan. But he's also done, this is welcome now to a radio cartoon. Picture the scene. Manager office big football club one side of the desk Dennis Bergkamp the other side of the desk not Arsene Wenger but supposing Bill Shankly had managed Arsenal oh he's done a cut literally a drawing right. Bill Shankly this is just two frames first frame that's Bill Shankly and he says to Dennis Bergkamp so I understand you can he fly son <laughs> to which Dennis Bergkamp replies Yes, Mr. Shankly, I am mentally incapable of travelling by aircraft. Consequently, this, um, how would you say, psychological impediment generates severe aversion to the very notion of air travel. Indeed, the mere sight of an airport induces dizziness, nausea, extreme limb vibration, and uh, once, forfeiture of consciousness. I hope you can appreciate my plight, boss. I just can't fly. To which Bill Shankly says, I see, dot, dot, dot. Turn over to the second page. There is an aeroplane in midair with what is it, with Bergkamp tied to a totem pole on top of it, <laughs> flying over the Alps. Bill Sh out the front window. Bill shaking his arm. He's shaking his fist at Dennis Bergkamp. <laughs> you're, you're lucky I didn't nail you to the wing. <laughs> And that's absolutely spot on, isn't it? Yeah, it's very good. Now, let me guess right. We're paying you 30 grand a week, yeah. and we've got an important football match in Greece. I'm not talking about Australia here, but Greece, yeah. and you don't fly. That's, that's, it. that's, that's far too fast awesome Wenger, isn't it? That, uh, no, not only Look that, that but yeah, I mean, even if he has yeah, got this thing and he's got 25 doctor certificates, uh, <laughs> the arm coming out the window, <laughs> Alps passing underneath. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so uh, he's got bird camp tied to contraction yeah. on top of the plane. Yeah. Uh, uh, but, it, it, you know, even if he's got all doctor certificates saying, yeah, he really does have a pathological fear of flying, it does not matter, does it? I'm sorry. No, well, don't sign for the club. And they, they shouldn't be as lenient. Uh, they should lenient. say thus far and no further. You know, all right, you get a coach, you'll get out there under your own steam. But we're not ever, that is, it really is a disgrace. Why disgrace. didn't they put him into a dorm and let him sleep and drive him out to these I matches? Said, why don't they? do that. I don't know, because he's Dennis Burkham and he said, oh, well, I'm not playing for you. Well, fine. Arsenal once had more dignity than to bend to the needs of a single player. And look where it got them. Bottom of the league. Rock solid. Wasn't it just the other week they were singing one team in Europe at Tottenham? I think they were. Now they are. They may be doing averagely well in the Premier after their bubblers burst, but in Europe they're a laughing stock. They are rock solid. Nailed Cholton position. Bottom. What, what was that? Oh, this was making me laugh. That's too bad. Going there, yeah? Too bad. Remember the call, my mother was a Nazi, yeah. we had on this show, yeah. um, where a fellow rang in and said that his mum um, well, had been a, a sergeant in, in, in Das Luftwaffe. No, it was, it was often yeah. the Hitler Youth. She was no, no, she was a sergeant. Oh, she was actually in Luftwaffe. Yeah, That's what right, she was, yeah. She was, yeah. Um, and now her father, blah, 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 blah. Um, here, the same, someone else has sent us this a photograph from a local paper in Wales. Um, the photograph um, uh, shows uh, young Welsh children um, in fancy dress for their school Christmas party in Christmas 1936 or 37, the paper reports. Mm -hmm. I want you to look at the girl in the middle of the back row. I'm going to tell you one thing, I'm going to fold down the back row so you can't see her initially. You can just describe what the rest of the kids look like. Okay. There we go. That's one of our great foldings on the radio. Yeah. I like these. The other kids look, you know, like yeah, yeah like and they're dressed up as farmers and singers. Only one is wearing the Welsh traditional dress. Yeah, some Vikings. Yeah, there's, 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 there's a load of kids yeah. wearing fancy dress. Chinamen are in there, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Over the top line. It's around the middle there. Oh so. no! <laughs> <laughs> that may be her. That's probably her. It's, 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 it's three rows of children, probably about fifty odd in all. And about, it's, about eight years of age. They've got yeah. painted faces and uh, it's like say Vikings, nurses, Chinamen. I can see here and someone done as a farmer. Someone's just got balloons all over them. And halfway along the back row is a, is a little, little girl. girl about ten dressed as a Nazi. <laughs> she is wearing swastikas. She has an armband and she is giving the Hitler salute. <laughs> She's 10 years old in 1936, and she's dressed as one of those funny people you see on the newsreels, complete with swastikas. All right, thank you very much. He's giving me a whole lot of newspaper clips. That's, uh, thank you, thank you Gareth, from... I'd have to get Phil in to read where he's from, my yeah. God. What do you want to say, Gary? Uh, two things. Yep. Firstly, the other Dan mentioned something about Preston North End's yes. new stand. Yes. yes. Yeah, the new stand. You actually sit on Tom Finney's face. Yes, you do, sir. <laughs> yes, you do. Oh, no! Which, let's face it, is more than Mrs. Vinny said. <laughs> <laughs> really? 
They yep. Describe it. It's a great big thing, isn't it? It is. It's about um, maybe a sixth of the stand. It's all picked out it's in... About 24 rows of seats back. So yeah, it's picked out in white, yellow, yeah. yellow, brown, black. Tom's in his face. He's yes. In in I don't know if that's a tribute at all. <laughs> I mean, I don't know that they get the biggest crowds in the world anymore, but it, 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 I would like to sit on Tom Phillips on his nostril. You'd be completely uneasy throughout the game, wouldn't you? And uh, cause, cause you, there must be some moment when you're sitting stand opposite and you're, you're, you're having a, oh. a sweepstake with your mate, who wishes the first part of his face is going to get sat on. Yeah, well, 2.37, two someone listen, comes in, sits on his eyelid. I, 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 you know, we, we, I, I'm, I'm for football, uh, football terrorism and, and subversive football acts up to a point. And I think it's certainly embraced here. And I will, I, I'll, you know, I'll give 50 pounds of my own money to the first Preston supporters, or indeed anyone in the country, could break in to Preston under the cover of darkness and paint the seats around Tom Finney's ears so it looks like he's wearing long drop earrings. <laughs> if you put three seats either side in gold, I think we've got Tom Finney in earrings, and I will pay to go to the East Preston. And, and, and then we'll follow that up sometime later. It's so quite an easy one to do, because you have to do a straight line of seats. If you can do a huge arrow into he an said, out of, out of uh, Tom Finney's head. head. I've never heard this. Yeah. Gary, do you actually sit anywhere near his head? Uh, no, no, I sit on the other side of the stand, unfortunately. But is it more expensive to sit on Tom Finney than not? Um, Are they going to build the rest of his so. body all around the ground? <laughs> is he going to lounge all the way around the ground? Well, I just did this. is a wonderful thing. Television. I've nearly hit the ceiling. I jumped out of my chair. Wow, well, I haven't seen it. Gary, thank you very much. Indeed. Oh, 0500 10 53 89. What are you looking at over there, Dan? Anything? Um, now, last week we had a correspondent who wrote in just five gravestones of famous football personalities, mm -hmm. what they might say on them. This huge sheaf of letters is people's attempts to better it. Okay. Some of them are good, some of them are bad. These are a pretty, pretty good bunch. This is from, what would be on footballers' tombstones. Yeah, from, Craig, from Craig McClay from Lawton in Warrington. Um, I'll just read some of them. Jurgen Klinsmann, dead for sure. For yeah, yeah, for dead sure, for yeah, sure, yeah. of course. Graham Taylor, did I not like that? Buried next to uh, for, to Phil Neal, yes. <laughs> Boss, presumably. Yeah. Brian Kilcline, I may still get you. Uh, no, I think Brian Kilcline should be, at last we are united master. That should be Brian Kilcline. Joanne, bless it, jo Joanne's grave. He's just done a lot of those prison-style stick figures with a line drawn through them. <laughs> I thought it was going to be the old Y-shaped Chris Evans is Chris Evans is gra a gravestone. Nothing, because you haven't written anything for him. No! Oh, I think that's very unkind. Yeah, go on. Trevor Steele has got the following thing written on it. Trevor Steele's got the following thing. The skeleton footballer couldn't go to the party in the graveyard. Why? Because he had no body to go with. Right, no, no, you, you missed off there. What is missed off there, Avatar? Always those initial words he says, did, the four words, yeah. did, did you hear about? So read it again in Trevor Steele mode. Did you hear about the skeleton footballer? Oh, sorry, there's a gap then. You're forgetting the yeah. formats. Did you hear about? <laughs> and there's a gap, so if you would. Did you hear about... The skeleton footballer who couldn't go to the party in the graveyard. Why? Because he had no body to go with. Now, these are not strictly uh, football epitaphs yeah. anymore, are they? This is this is another one. Darren Anderson. Ah. ah. Look at my three thousand pound gravestone. It wasn't even a, word, a week's wages. <laughs> Look at my three thousand pound gravestone. <laughs> Fabio and Groove Rider, the Radio One DJs. Their their, their epitaph is. Why are all our letters addressed to Dear Danny's? <laughs> <laughs> and finally from this bunch, and we're going to do more of these later on, they're very good, Steve Sedgley, nothing, grave empty due to voodoo doll revival. Oh yeah, of course, he walks the earth. Scrapbook update. Oh yeah. We're deeply, deeply, deeply grateful to C.E. Chapman, who has faxed us on 0541 59 69 79. Tony Cotty's scrapbook. What do you know about them so far? My goals for West Ham, it said on the front. What, 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 what do we know about his scrapbook so far? Well, all we know is that there was a photograph on the back of the Daily Mirror uh, when he went to Everton being very nostalgic about his time at West Ham and held up a childish scrawl on the front that said, My goal for West Ham with the crossed hammers on the front. Not only does he keep the scrap, according to this, these, these from a, a report from some annual, I would guess, a C.E. Chapman, I think that's his name, has sent us on the facts. Not only does Tony keep uh, the newspaper cuttings of his goals for West Ham and presumably for whatever team pay for No, I think that my goals for Everton might be a Leicester. slimmer volume. Yes, it would be. That, that yeah. would be uh, issued by a p portfolio poetry company, wouldn't it? it? <laughs> However, he also writes headlines on them and comments. Oh, yeah? Now, in the photograph here, above the actual cutting, you can see a man's handwriting. What does it say? Uh, above the actual... Above oh, yeah. Show, 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 show. Okay. Cracked 
cracked it. Cracked it? And, what's furthermore... He uh, writes, he, put, he puts his headlines on the and top. And then he writes a report on the match. Oh, not his own Here report. Here we go. Tony Cotty. Oh, Tony no. Cotty. Now, and uh, to be fair to him, he defends the whole principle here. And good luck to the fellow, bless him. Um, a long oh, diatribe here about how it's it. great, about the key six sort of crap books, and when everyone oh, else... crap books, you just said it, When yeah. everybody else has forgotten all about his career, he'll have it to look back on. Long, yeah, long, so long, long. Today. However... Uh, here, here's a report um, of an away game at Watford, um, won 2 0 by West Ham. These are in inverted commas from his own scrapbook. Good performance overall on a heavy pitch. <laughs> Scored a goal early on and clinched it in the last minute. I had a fair game. Hit the bar from close range and scored the first goal in the 14th minute. Mark Ward made a run. Alan Devonshire took over, crossed a low ball from the right into the box. I turned the defender and hit the ball right-footed inside the far post. Well, I, I could only appeal that to Tony Cotty. Apologise for my uh, rather guttural laugh at the beginning of this. If you wish, if you wish to share with the nation, uh, or bequeath to the nation, the, co <laughs> the Coney Totty. <laughs> the Coney Totty. <laughs> That's what he is from there. Right? Yeah, Coney Totty, isn't he? <laughs> the Coney <laughs> the Coney Totty Scrapbooks, edited by Danny Baker. I would be happy to, like, in the Kenneth Williams diaries, I would be happy to overlook them. We can get a South Bank show out of this. Tonight on the South Bank show, Coney Totty. <laughs> <laughs> For so long, Britain Premier Striker, tonight Coney talks freely about his work in the Totty years. <laughs> oh, my God, again. <laughs> Have we, we haven't got the thunderstorm still, have we? The, yeah. uh, we have the music set up, ladies and gentlemen. Okay. It's been a very long time. A friend on. of ours has sent us in the following names from the 1988-89 Guide to B Football in the Benilux Countries. Mamadou Tu. That's a good start, isn't it? <laughs> Harry Knops. Spencer Smolders. Vili Velens. Rono, uh, Ronnie Borlu. Dante Brogno. Walter de Grief. Bob Hoogenboom, <laughs> Luke Limpens, <laughs> Morris Van Ham, Remco Boer, Marco Gentile, Hans Stout, Henk Dutt, Robert Kicken, Stack Storm, Bare End Beltman, <laughs> Hoob Smeet, Ben Spork, and of course, Bart van der Pop. <laughs> Bart van der Pop. <laughs> Bart van der Pop. What was so out of that? Van der Pop could have a pop and kick his kickings. I wonder if Aaron was right. Had a kickings, kickings, then van der Pop had a pop. Oh. Ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, Paul, uh, uh, here comes Paul Ross. We're reduced to talking to other studios the now. Presenter. No, it's the previous <laughs> presenter. Paul. Hello, Danny. Must oh, be a quiet morning. Oh man, oh. It's quite quiet. It's not. It's just not very. We're just no good this morning. But there it is. I did. I flagged it at the top of the no, show. No, no, it was a self-fulfilling prophecy, Danny. It was. I said that. I said we never really do clinkers of shows, but here we are in the midst of one. And to prove it, here's Paul. Uh, Paul. <laughs> <laughs> so, Paul. Paul. So I, I'm not wrong in that. One of the first gigs you ever had was supposedly bringing us all the latest from Exeter. Is that right? Well, the thing was when commercial radio first kicked in, I. Mm -hmm. I made my sound heard available. I was getting seven quid in 1981 for Devonair. Well, right. I think I've now sadly defunct, right? Devonair. And as you know, I am, you know, virtually ig completely ignorant about football. Yeah, but well, you know, I've spun that out into a career. I gave so, yeah. a load of old ball, and yeah. I also um, even affected a slight Devon Burr. <laughs> oh! A bit more West Country, because I was on a paper. Yeah. And I thought, oh, I love the, the, the Gold House and James, this, the Exeter, all the boys and all that. And the first game, and it's oh, engraved on my memory, was Bristol Rovers, right. Exeter City. Right? right, OK. Really dull game, it was like November, hammering down with rain, but not enough to stop it. Nil-nil. Mm -hmm. The dying moments of the game, they always come to you. And in the dying moments of the game, St James's Park, we crossed out the Paul Ross live, for us there at St James's Park on the touchline and as the sods came to me Bristol Rovers hammered one in mm. on that moment now I'd written my carefully crafted little bit of copy <laughs> and I just went I went you know Rovers was nil. I rambled like that for about 20 seconds. It seemed like eternity. They cut me off. Yeah. And the BBC geese who had been very helpful next to me, local BBC, <laughs> said, and he said, with some false, you clot. Yeah. So I was still curious. I said, what, I said, what do you mean? He said, all you've got to do, you silly toad, is 
hang up on yourself. Just cut the phone. And I say, we seem to have lost Not that line. Yeah. What they do? Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. what they do. Not only was I never ever asked to do anything for Devonair again, but because I was also there representing my little local paper, I got an official letter of reprimand from my editor. Because, because, you, which, because you try to ad lib the moment. And I still got the letter. It says, for exposing the express and echo to ridicule. <laughs> oh, I like they ain't capable, yeah. yeah, yeah right. wow. And I was on, it's older, I was on 45 quid a week and seven quid would have made a, a nice bit of call. Well, oh, I, 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 I tell that, so I told it actually last night that we all oh, seem to have lost Paul there. Uh, <laughs> we, uh, I was telling that story last night and I, I hoped it was true and I remembered it, yeah. Came across to me, I had no idea who was scoring and it must be done so well, that's why we're looking, had to, unless it, you want to take Paul's crown, if your local person, maybe not be Devon is, uh, is a legend because he plainly has no idea what's going on. And when he was saying, I don't know, I don't, because I don't know very much about football, how clear was that when he was hung by his own petard? They said, it was raining, but not hard enough to stop the match. Because uh, yeah, they don't they stop, stop matches, matches for, for rain. Yeah. Uh, I've spoken like a member of the Rosses. They think, yeah. they, they think it's open air theatre. All <laughs> uh, right. My eyes are stinging. You we know were, why? Because we were wearing the giant stockings over our heads well, earlier. Sure, this is hand, <laughs> hand to God. This is absolutely true. During the news, Danny and I put Joanne's stockings on our heads. In the right? style of criminals. <laughs> But uh, but and then I had your cowboy hat on as well. Is she there? Joanne's uh, there's Apposite on line oh, two. Oh, Joanne. No, we'll come back to Graham if he had another point. But Joe. Oh yeah. Go on, Joe. During the news, Danny and I yeah. put your stockings on our head. Yes, yeah. we did. Now uh, they, they are quite perfumed, and, and believe me, they've they've done the rounds today, right? <laughs> uh, People in Oxford Street were queuing up. <laughs> <laughs> but. They've left some kind of residue on my eyes, and I, I my eyes are streaming. And what on earth was on your stockings? And if you if, if you mention bow one, I'm going to throw up. Well, I took them straight off my legs and sent them. So. But I don't know. It was some kind of link to some kind. It's great, by the way. It's it an unction of some kind. As Nancy Griffith, as Nan, as Nan, I know it's perfume. I'm sure it's perfume. I don't know whether it was a, a some kind of rub on. Uh, no, and, that would be and my it, body lotion. No, it's body lotion. You I, see, and, as Nancy Griffith would say, from a distance, yeah, I'm all for it. But we should not. You should have sent a letter saying, lads, I know it is the One thing we do, put on one thing you do know, Danny, if later on the pub... No, I'm trying to take my glasses yeah. off. I'm not yeah. even wearing them. I'm yeah. going like this. I'm feeling <laughs> on my face. In the near... On my glasses. And I've just realised they're not even on my face. If in the in very near future we're in the pub and people say we've got no eyebrows, it's probably hair removal cream. <laughs> oh, that's what I'll put it down to then. Yeah. <laughs> over, the, over the coming year I'll say what it was, I had a yeah. very full head of hair and I put a strange woman's stocking on my head and she'd been using IMAC. Anyway, uh, Joe, welcome aboard. Not as good as Deep Heat, of course, IMAC, for any IMAC. purpose. No. Uh, IMAC, of course. Deep, being... deep Heat giving us the bin. Where no, Deep Heat. Oh. oh, no. Oh, no. Don't mention that. Uh, uh, anyway, sorry, Joe. Joe, what can we do for you this evening? How did this afternoon go? You were trying to get the attention oh. of Bow 5. Did that work? Yep. Brilliantly, yeah. Did it? Yeah. She never misses this girl, does she? <laughs> I was I was in Greenwich this afternaon, and of course people come up and say, right. now, come on. Who, hey, so, you, taxi driver's stopping me in the street There's two now. questions. They say, who is it? Because if you've just joined us, uh, you know, uh, the three Premier League players and a Premier League manager involved, and Joe has had intimate knowledge of all of them. Uh, they even grabbed hold of each other, two of these players. And everyone always says, the first question, who is it? And when we deny that, they say, but it's all a wind-up, isn't it? And uh, believe me, when it first started, Joe, and we first, as I said to you, we both thought, well, if it is, it's still good right Yes, yeah, it's, it's still great. Yeah. However, through circumstances which you know, Joe, yeah. and everyone here knows, we now can cross-reference and bona fide everything, and we're sorry we have You're trying to bring in witnesses that apparently knew me in Leicester yeah, 20 years I mean, ago, and I don't know. Believe us, everyone, this is absolutely true. Now, this afternoon, uh, we all know what we're talking about, one of the most famous players, I believe, in Britain, uh, you had your eye on him. Now, I've just yeah. asked you whether it went further than that, and you're saying it went well. Tell us. Well, I've got his phone number. Yeah. Yeah. Um, today was I uh, dressed the most inappropriately I've ever dressed for a football match. Oh, tell crazy. me about it, slutty babe. No, I don't mean that in the affectionate. No, in the internet, it's a very affectionate word in the states because I mean we are radio sluts, you see, which is good. And I'm not saying no, no way out of that. Sorry, you know, you know I love Back you. Back off, boy. Yeah, I know. Go on. Yes, all right. So you dressed inappropriately. What are you talking about? Yeah, I had the shortest dress on ever. Yeah. The oh. women all curling their lips. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. it worked. Yeah. Oh, did it work? I'm really? Go on. Hang on, hang on. A uh, huge footballer sees woman in short dress and it worked? <laughs> uh, okay, yeah. Uh, yeah, go on. Well, I'm just stuck in. <laughs> 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 Sorry, Joe. You put, your stocking nearly put somebody's eye out. Sorry, Joe. So, well, both of ours are here. Extremely, on, yeah. extremely yeah. famous footballer uh, is attracted to your short skirt. And well, he asked me if I was Bo Three's girlfriend, and I said no, absolutely not. Oh. <laughs> and who were you at the I game? Carry it in a mini skirt. Who were you? Who were you at the game with? With Bo Three. Yeah. And yeah. Bo Two was there as well. So, he, uh, do, is he married, this fella? I don't know. 
Oh, she don't care. You don't play, care, you, really? You, you, I know, I've never asked about the others. No. How about this fella, is he? I don't think so. I bet he's webbed up. Listen, he's not going to be a, a solo pin, is he? He's not going to be... He's not I, gonna think, be. I, think, I think he's... Uh, yes, I, th I think he's... Uh, what's the... How's the phrase? Uh, is it a he is, he's the walking the full length of the counter before making, making his making choice. His selection. Yeah, yes, yeah. of course he is. So, Joe, if he calls you... Well, I've got... Uh, he gave me his phone number, so yeah. I've got to call him. Will you? Oh, yeah, I will do. I'm a bit scared. And not without reason. <laughs> not without reason. A lot of the Premier League is quite scared. Be afraid, be very afraid. Uh, Danny, you know, just after that, um, I found out what I've got um, for Christmas from Bo3. Oh, yeah. Um, it's a car. Whoa! Joking! <laughs> you see, here's my argument. Bo3 hasn't turned in a good performance, to my knowledge, for, what, three months? He's given away cars! <laughs> this is the modern game. Here are the players who you walk out saying, well, if they don't flog him next week, I'm not going anymore. He's buying people cars! I mean, this is the modern game. People deny to his own face that they're even a girlfriend. Exactly, yeah. exactly. <laughs> Dying three times before the cock crows. Oh, yes, oh, indeed. Okay, yeah. You said you can go and pick it up tomorrow, because I'm not going to be here Christmas Day. What motor is it? Oh. Pardon? Do you know what motor it is? The Nissan Micra. He's a tight one. Tight one. Well, I don't know. I mean, it's very good, isn't it? It's very good. But I've had a really great afternoon, and I'm going to Spain on my five grand from my manager. Yeah, so the manager paid. Good, he didn't. He didn't pay you off, but he just gave you in return for some letters <laughs> and photographs five thousand pounds. Yeah. So you're a car and five thousand grand up so so far. Yeah. Yeah. And it's I've a, got. A you're having a, you're, you're having a first half of the season as good as Chelsea so far, aren't you? <laughs> 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 when are you off, Joe? Wednesday. Um, I'm going on Tuesday, Tuesday evening, yeah. No, oh, we'll postcard us, won't you? I will do. It's not um, going to be the same. Yeah, go on, um, what? I've got to look for Danny Kelly there, because I mustn't forget. Um, your friend Maureen. Yes. <laughs> she, did you get my message this morning? That, that, um, there was something, now you better... Yeah. yeah I got some hang garbled... On, hang on, <laughs> both six looming on the horizon. Here, I got this? some garbled message about Revolver yeah. Records in yeah, Leicester. Yeah, she said to say to you, Revolver Records, outside, you were late. Oh man, I'm. I'm um, it's, it's just, if anyone, it's just another source that Danny. Uh, well, it doesn't matter because we were going to identify, we'd be geographically yeah. whatever. But Joe, she found you inside oh. the record shop. The button just yeah, popped. Well, the she button would just popped off. The she fader. Look, how hot is it in here? The button has popped off the fader. She wouldn't. She wouldn't go be the first woman who, who on, on hoping to meet me for a date, had to find me in a record shop first. <laughs> you wouldn't look him like. Where shall I meet you? Not under the Shrewsbury clock. No. Where you're here in a braid, wearing a carnation. Meet you outside a second-hand record shop. That sounds like my man. This is why these stories are all true. Uh, Joe, have a fantastic yeah, have Christmas and New Year. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed for lightening up these programmes and, uh, and and also being intriguing, uh, because we've got to do a break. Go and this is, this is a letter from an old friend of the show, Mick McSorley, the, the, Mick the, the Claremont, Claremont Barber. Barber. You may remember Leeds United's historic 7-0 humiliation of Southampton in the early 70s. Anybody above us, above 25 will remember it's that game. Yeah. yeah, Leeds, absolutely the most extraordinary game. Um, some of the credit for this awesome display must, of course, go to Don Revy and the Legion machine of Bremner Giles, etc. Mm -hmm. I believe the events immediately prior to kickoff had a devastating effect on the mental well-being of the Southampton players that afternoon. Events that include, he says, a rifle... A mad dog and a suspected att assassination attempt. Now, hang on. This is Mick. Mick, yep. Mick as we know, is not above... Uh, I, I don't think... Of, but he, well, all right. Listen to the story. Pyramids and puffs. Yeah, listen, to, listen to the story. Yeah. On that fateful day in March 1972, I was Lee Harvey Oswald, he says. Right. I shall present the sequence of events chronologically, and they, they are detailed enough that I believe them to be true. Okay. That's how I'm it goes. listening. Mick lives, okay. near, near, Mick lives near Ellen Road. Mm -hmm. um, March 4th, 1972... 12.30 p.m., i.e. half past midday. Mm. Ellen Road. My friend Steve, then age 13, like myself, and I board a bus outside my house on Ellen Road. Purpose? To purchase a second-hand air rifle with which to shoot rats at the back of the rear of Ellen Road Stadium. Okay. 1.15 p.m., return to Mum's house with firearms secreted under Steve's Crombie and tin of Bulldog .177 pellets oh, in my back pocket. They, don't make, they make a lovely noise when they rattle. Mum's attention diverted by feigned stomach cramps and weapon hidden behind sofa. Large crowds of football supporters outside. 1.30 p.m., Mum goes out. Urge to test new firearm becomes too strong to resist. Weapon retrieved. Bad idea. 1.32 p.m., Ellen Road leads. Steve and I proceed down Ellen Road. Steve trying to walk normally with rifle down trouser leg. I have collie dog Laddie on lead. 1.33 p.m. Steve having difficulty. Rifle longer than leg. Lifts the stock of weapon five inches above waistband. Police presence heavy. 1.35 uh, p.m. Two policemen approach. 
Steve loses composure, takes out the rifle, throws it at me, and makes a run for it. What a mate! First officer dives theatrical onto the weapon. Second officer performs origami on my left arm. <laughs> Laddie bites officer on thigh. 1.40 p.m. Escorted by half a dozen officers through main gate of Ellen Road Stadium, one officer holds weapon triumphantly above his head. Much pointing and gasping from general public. Southampton team coach arrives. Team C, a Leeds fan being led away with rifle above his head. Ah, <laughs> now, this is, yeah, this is plausible. I can believe this. I make accidental eye contact with, with keeper Martin. Eric Martin was now oh, the goalkeeper. Great. Right. He looks anxious. 4.45 p.m., Southampton lose 7-0. Revy gets the credit, but the truth is out there. Wow, the mobile police great. control room. That is great. So uh, That is a fantastic... Well, it's not Sunday 5th of March. Oh. Sunday 5th of March, Holbeck Police Station, 3 p.m., receive police caution, encouraged to join boys' club. <laughs> <laughs> school, 6th of, Sunday, Monday, 6th of March, school... Steve demands half the money back for his rifle. Receives summary justice. This, well, <laughs> this, 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 Brilliant, this, Mick. This, this is a wonderful, as always, Mick, always. I don't know why I thought it'd be one of your weirder ones. It's not. That is the same as you've ever written. That is the no, most amazing either. story, though, it isn't is. it? I'm That's a Millwall that. supporter myself. Oh, no. <laughs> Who knew? And, yeah, go and on. I went up to Liverpool um, in 88 when they drew one all. Yes, yes, yes. And oh, I wonder... Oh, I thought I'd have gone to heaven. My mum packed me a sandwich. Huh? My mum packed me a sandwich. Yes. And they searched it, and I had to lift they all the layers of cheese. No, they didn't search yeah. the sandwich. Don't you, don't you have some kind of secret handshake when you get to football grounds with other policemen? <laughs> Even if they, they, they searched I was still the, sand, the actual layers um, of sandwich. Danny at yeah. Millwall, get over it. Live with it. <laughs> no. Yeah. How old were you? Oh, uh, about you, 15. And how old was the sandwich? Oh, that was about 15 and <laughs> all. No, I, un I understand. When Millwall went to Manchester United that season in the Premier League, the police split the peanuts in half. They, they, they searched the middle of the they peanuts. They did. They were looking for the E. You can get them in those nuts, I understand. <laughs> they this is even better than your story of the mad old woman helping out the step. And then, and then, you know, the um, most embarrassing thing he's done at well, football. Wait a I'm still with the sandwich here. Yeah. Cause I, uh, what uh, do they find, When we're at the BBC, I'll be honest, when we're at the BBC, you get like 10,000 calls a minute. Here we're doing like... Ten calls a minute now, with about a thousand. Yeah, all right. And uh, the BBC ones, yeah, you get all this. And we haven't really had that real high water mark of people ringing in with the cardboard bow ties. Uh, mm -hmm. But this, I'm afraid, is as good as anything we ever did. Somebody searched a sandwich, sir, and they they, they looked in the, the layers of cheese. cheese. They were holding up the different yeah, layers and of cheese. He asked, I asked him what he was looking for, <laughs> and he said razor blades. Of course. And I said, well, it cut my tongue last time. Well, <laughs> <laughs> and and of course, you're straight into the police with humour like that, my yeah, friend. Yeah, no, listen. And you see, that's what you did. Say, by the way, uh, you know, Red from Division Seven says, oh, in you go, sir. But, you know, but, but Sam, that's a go on, carry on. Yeah, one one more. last bit. The most embarrassed. You know how you've embarrassed yourself. I wanted. I, it's a big catch when I was at work in, yeah. balls come over. Mm -hmm. I can't remember who it was, so I thought I'll have this on the volley. Yeah. Put it straight over the roof of the stand. <laughs> what, in the ground? Yeah. Where? Brighton. Right. At Brighton? Yeah. So you're, uh, you're in uniform? Yeah. Well, this is oh. fantastic. How come yeah. cameras haven't got this? Yeah. The police. They, I thought you're supposed to stand with your back to the game, aren't you? You know, like this. But yeah. you, the ball came to you, you took it on the volley, and it left the ground. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So that's a Brighton thing then, isn't oh, it? Oh, well, ladies and gentlemen, I'm saying here, we don't often do this because it's so hack radio, but everyone in there, come on. That was Mark. Oh, that's Mark, Mark the Coppers, yeah. Mark the Copper. Fantastic. Oh, well, then, then now we're up and flying. Now, Mick McSorley had, been, had taken something about half the mail we used to get. Mick the Clairvoyant Barber, as was. From Leeds, uh, an old friend of the show, I'm sure a friend of that's the new show. That's the television set, you know that? That's why he's across all radio shows. He's across all radio shows, and Mick Oakley okay, contributes to Chris's show a lot. Yes, now, he does. He? Yeah. Yes, he does. And Mick sent us a letter saying, all right, I understand you've now seen through some of my disguise, and you'll stop reading out my letters. If we agree to go back to telling the truth, will you? And I said, absolutely, because he's the lovely Mick McSorley. So I hope this is all true, Mick, because he's got your own name. This is a wonderful and thing. And your pyramid on it. You know, we've been doing um, football teams as expressed by other things. Sometimes Squad numbers in, in, a, in a Chinese restaurant, or you can say number 39 at so-and-so. Let's have a look at number 39 of a newspaper. Just marrying up players' squad numbers to other things in life that have numbers. OK, well, this, these don't have numbers. This has just got mixed mix all his imagination and a true event. On New Year's Eve, he was in his house, outside his house in Leeds. There was a full-scale and very typical New Year's Eve argument, and Mick has matched up the sentence that he can remember from the argument to the current Leeds United team. Danny, right, read so, our team. So what he's done, it's a man and a woman, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it is. And he's numbered the sentences. They're having a post -party Party row and he number, number the sentences and married them up to yeah. the. Can I give him any old order? You can, um, I think it'd be better because it's story unfolds. Okay, okay. Yeah. okay. <clears throat> yeah. Nigel Martin. You're just a slag, Debbie. <laughs> Ian Hart. Why can't you just come out and enjoy yourself, Steve? <laughs> 
<laughs> Martin Hayden. Because, Debbie, every time you make a beeline for Gary Hobson. <laughs> Robert Molinar. Slag. <laughs> Jonathan Woodgate. No, you are a slag, Debbie. Elf Inga Harland. Right, you've done it this time, Steve. F off. Harry Kewell. You know I love you, Steve. David Hopkin. Tugboat in slag. <laughs> <laughs> this, this fella's a charm, really. Jimmy Floyd Hasselbink. Oh, are you going to make me walk home by myself, then? Lee Boyer. Slag, slut! <laughs> David Weatherall. Get off me, you tart! <laughs> <laughs> so that is the Lee team, as represented by the argument <laughs> outside Mick McSorley's house on New Year's Eve. Get off me, you <laughs> tart! That's, that was his, that was as she moves in for the, for the hair pulling and eye gouging. <laughs> <laughs> He's a charmer, old Steve, isn't yeah, he? Yeah, well, there it is. There. And Gary Hobson, if you're listening, you're in there. You're a shoe-in. 22 minutes after 7 o'clock. Uh, I've got, 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 got to get some things in here. Okay. First of all, I'm going to do some of these effort. I'm, I'm saving this top letter till, till, till the very last. Don't forget about it now, please. Mm -hmm. But hats off to... Um, to uh, what's the name of this this correspondent? To uh, Joe D Joe Davola. Joe Davola. No. Joe, what? <laughs> Joe Davola. Is that a Seinfeld crazy no, 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 Joe okay, Davola? Yeah, well, he's, he's called himself Sane Joe Davola. I do. Oh, I there that. you go. It's a Seinfeld reference. Yes, from, from South Yorkshire. I, went to say, I apologize for not getting. There you go. He starts the letter with very small writing. It gets a bit bigger and bigger and bigger. It goes. Fat boys, fat boys, fat boys, fat, fat boys, boys, fat boys. Hats off the last week. Okay, these are some of these epitaphs. They're, they're not all footballers, but they are all good. Of course, Kenneth Wilson home. They think it's all over. It is now. Very good. Freddie Truman. In my day, people didn't die. <laughs> <laughs> Murray Walker, who we know doesn't always get everything right. I'm alive! <laughs> Glenn, Percy Thrower. Now I'm mulch. No, that, you told me that one. Yeah, yeah that's a very that's good one. That's all right. Yep. Glenn, second best, I think, of, of, of all of um, Joe's uh, entries is Glenn Hoddle. At this moment in eternal nothingness, I'm in a non-existing situation. <laughs> yeah. But perhaps best of all, James Alexander Gordon. Grim Reaper one, me nil. <laughs> <laughs> Those Just are very good. Very good, Saint Joe Davola. Superb. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hang on, Maggie Thatcher's quite good. What does she say? The lady's not for breathing. <laughs> <laughs> Anne Robinson, this coffin is a potential death trap. <laughs> I, I hadn't turned the paper over, had I? Oh, that's too good. Very good. This coffin is a potential death trap. Thank you very much.